Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Hi everybody, welcome to Breakthrough. Um, I'm excited to be talking to you tonight and uh, I'm excited about what God is doing here at Breakthrough. And I, I would just encourage you to become a part of what God is doing. Uh, you know, visit our, visit our website at mybreakthrough.online. Uh, like us on Facebook, uh, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we have lots of content there. Uh, and also, uh, if we can pray with you, we'd love to do that. We have a prayer wall up on our, up on our, uh, on our, fa on our, I'm sorry, on our website. And uh, so if you could uh, go there uh, and even, you know, think about prayerfully considering su to support uh, Breakthrough Church. Uh, we're really excited about what God is doing uh, there's just amazing things that are going on, and uh, we just want you to be a part of that. We want uh, not only to be a blessing to you, but we want to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. And, uh, and uh, we have uh, many, many people that are viewing uh, from all over the world now, and uh, we're just really excited about that. And uh, so I want to get right into the Word tonight. So if, uh, if you have your Bibles, I want to look at Matthew, the 16th chapter, and verse 24. Um, <clears throat> we have a, it's a very uh, familiar, uh, real simple verse, uh, Matthew 16, verse 24, and I'll just read it to you. I'll be reading from the King James Version tonight. And then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Let me just pray. Lord, I just pray that you would touch our hearts, our minds, our lives, God, and that, Lord, that you would just uh, transform us from the inside out tonight, Lord. We just give you uh, the next few minutes, uh, the next 15 minutes or so, Lord. We give that to you, God. We ask that you would do whatever you want, God. Uh, just be whoever you want to us, God, and through us, God. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for, for, for being God, Lord, that we don't have to be God. We can just be followers of you, Lord. And I just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to start out this morning, uh, this evening, uh, with the word "if." Um, it's a little word, the word "if," and often in our life, in my life, anyways, I, I found it interesting that uh, you you might find yourself saying that. You know, I'd be a better person if, you know, uh, I I would be doing something else if, you know, I if if it wasn't for that, or if it wasn't for that, or if it wasn't for the way I think, or if it wasn't for who I am, or if it wasn't for so and so. You know, it's if is a, uh, a, a little word with a lot of meaning behind it. And, uh, uh, you know, we can fill in the blank, uh, you know, even go, to, go so far to say, I'd be happy if, you know, I'd be happy if you treated me right. I'd be happy if I had more money. I'd be happy if this or happy if that. And uh, 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 I was, I was uh, uh, I'll just be real transparent with you. Uh, during, during worship uh, uh, this past week, I was in a time of worship. And uh, I, I had my hands lifted, and I was uh, just just singing singing out to the Lord. And uh, it uh, it struck me in the middle of that time with Him. It struck me that uh, you know I was okay, you know, lifting my hands. I was even okay singing. I was okay uh, clapping my hands. I was okay uh, being d demonstrative. But there was there was a point in time in that in that time of worship that I felt like okay, that's that's enough. That's I'm I'm good now. You know. You want to back off a little bit, and uh, it was it was it was when I got to that moment that I that I thought about this verse, and uh, that's why this sermon this sermon came out of a, a time of worship. But but there there's a line somewhere I think in all of us that we will go so far with God, but then we're like, okay, that's it, I'm I'm gonna stop. And and there's there's a there's a time, uh, uh, and and that's that's where this sermon comes from. So it's time to preach a little bit on that little. That little moment, that little uh, conflict, I think that's inside of all of us, uh, with our with with relationship to how far will you go in your worship with God, or what does it really mean? And uh, uh, I, I wrote this down. I think it's really relevant. God God wants our intimacy. He doesn't want our acquaintance. I, I want you to let that sink in a little bit. He wants intimacy with us in such a way, not not just acquaintance, because. A lot of times we go to church and we relate, I think, with God like we relate to others. Uh, we're, we're happy being acquaintances, waving from afar, saying, I'm blessed, or I'm, I'm excited, or I'm happy, 
but but really to, to get to the place where we're actually honest uh, with what's happening inside of us uh, with someone else, even with God. And that, that's the rub. I want to I want to talk about that a little bit. And it says in this verse, it says, if any man come after me, let him. <laughs> I, I think it's really powerful that 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 if any man comes after me. So if there's any of any of us that are going to actually walk towards God, it's going to require uh, uh, work on our on our our behalf. God has already done all the work on his behalf. It, Jesus came. He sent his son to die. And, he, and Jesus even said it on the cross. He said it is finished. Right. He finished the work that he came to perform. And so it, 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 it's as if God said, I love you. And he's waiting for us, our response to that love. A amen. Can I get an amen right there? And so if any man, if I, if, if Pastor Everett would, if, if you could fill in your own name, but if, 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 if I would just walk towards him, if I would just let him, right, let him in my life, let him in my, my relationships, let him in my thoughts, let him in my, uh, my workplace, let him in my finances, let him into my marriage, let him into all of those, those areas of our life. If any man would, would let, see, see, uh, isn't it funny that, that Jesus requires my participation. Okay. I think that's, that's so, so hilarious because, uh, often, and, and maybe I'm the only one, but often when I go to pray, right, I go and pray and I'm manipulative in my prayer towards God. You know, God, I'll serve you if, if you do this. I'll, I'll be nice if you're nice. I'll be nice if they're nice. I'll be nice if this happens or that happens. And then when that doesn't happen or this doesn't happen or they're not nice, then, then my participation goes out the window. Well, I've, see, God, you didn't do it, right? So that's my excuse to, 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 go, to continue my path. Uh, in John 14, verse 1, it says this very powerful thing. And I... I, I, I can pray this prayer or I can talk about this verse because often you'll, you'll do it in a moment where, where it may be a mom, moment of sadness, but it says, let not your heart be troubled, right? And in life, often our heart is troubled, right? And who's responsible for let not your heart be troubled? And, and the person that's responsible for that is, the, is those of us that are speaking that tonight. Let not your heart be troubled. And uh, so, so there's a requirement on my part to participate in what God has already accomplished. Amen. And so I'm the one that's responsible for the let. OK, I'm responsible for for what I let happen. Right. What, what I what I let happen in my in my mind, in my heart. Right. Uh, if any man will come after me, let him. Right. Let him. Uh, so. So have you ever noticed in life that trouble changes us, right? If, if we never had trouble, we would never be changed. We would continue down the same road because trouble seems to change me, right? And so, so it's easy for us to say something, but it's more for us to, to, to do, right? So I must deny, right, myself, right? If any will come after me, let him. Deny. That's my next word. Deny. Deny. So I, 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 want, <laughs> I want to give you this statement, okay, right here at this word deny. I want to give you a statement. The statement is simple. It says, it says, wrong is right when it doesn't know it's wrong. <laughs> it's really powerful. Wrong is right when it doesn't know it's wrong. See, see but when wrong is found out, right? I, we must do the right thing. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, because when, when I think what's right, what I'm doing is right, I'll keep doing it. But when I understand that what I think is right is actually wrong, I have to modify my behavior, all right, right in order to, to be right. It's, it's very true. Kind of confusing there. I hope I didn't mess you up. But unless, unless we won't submit to the concept that we were wrong. Okay. See, because if I deny that what I, what I'm doing is wrong, I'll stay right where I am. You see, you see what I'm saying? So, so unless, uh, so, so let me just take it a little step further. I become a Christian, I get saved and I lift my hands and I worship and, and the spirit of God speaks to me and says, he says, 
<laughs> take another step, come a little closer. And, and I go, oh, I'm, I'm close enough. See, I, I haven't denied myself because I feel like that's as far as I want to go. So that's what the Spirit does in our life always. It's always asking us to come a little closer. It's always asking for more intimacy in my life. See, see God wants to be intimate. He wants to know every little part of me. I, I think I said it on Sunday, but uh, He wants to go into, the, into your house and he doesn't want to just stand in the front room. He wants to go all the way into your bedroom and open the closet door. And he wants to look and see what's inside there. And that's, that's the kind of intimacy that God really wants from us. He doesn't want just a part of us. He doesn't want just a, a, a section of our life on Sunday. He wants, he wants our Monday, our Tuesday, our Wednesday, our Thursday, our Friday, our Saturday. And even closer than that, he wants our thought life. He wants to get right up in the business of what we're thinking about, right? Uh, and so, uh, <clears throat> it, the, it, the fact is, is that we are loved. Jesus is love. We, we say it a lot. God is love, right? And we say God is good. We say that all the time. But, but love is not withholding something. See, because real love, that's what Jesus showed us. He, so, he showed us on the cross that real love goes, goes all the way and dies right that's what jesus did and he's asking the same from us are you willing to deny yourself and take up the cross the, the cause that he has given us right because each of us has a, a gift or a calling or a commitment or something that god has given us that he's asking us to present to him and often in our life we hold back from that that very thing that he's asking us uh, repeatedly over and over and over and over and over and oftentimes in our life this is just a constant uh, regurgitation of the same thing over and over and over. It's time for something new, right? Amen? Can I get an amen? Don't you want something new in your life? I want something new in my life. And that means I have to, I have to deny myself and begin to adopt His truth, uh, adopt His love into my life, and I will become exactly who I'm supposed to be. I, I found this verse, and I, I, I studied this verse many times, but in Hebrews 6, verse 9, and I'm not really going to break it all apart for you tonight, but it's, it's really a good verse. It says, But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation. Uh, and, and I'll just stop right there because I, I like the word beloved because beloved really typifies the word when I say deny. It's, it's simple because beloved, it means it just break that word apart. It's be loved. That's what it is. Be loved. And so... If we're ever going to be who, all who God wants us to be, we must come to a place where we are loved, where we understand we're loved. And that means that I can throw my hands up and go, you know what, God, I just, I just love you. And you're going to feel a response from him because he loves you already. And, and so he's waiting for you to identify with the fact that you are loved. There's, there's nothing that can separate us, the, the Bible says. Nothing that can ever separate us from the love of God. Not what I did good, not what I did bad, not my yesterday, not my future, not, not things in heaven, not things in earth, not things below the earth, not, not principalities, not powers, no devil in hell. Nothing can ever separate us from that love. But you must deny yourself and allow the love in. Amen? Beloved. And then I love the word persuaded, right? Persuaded is is to persuade somebody is to teach them or to show them that that this is the right thing right and and as a christian we must uh, operate what we call faith right but we must operate in faith that that persuasion in ourselves the persuasion that i am loved the persuasion that jesus did die for me the persuasion that i i have all that i need inside i have the love of god in me and he just wants to come out amen be persuaded, right? And that, I think one of the greatest ways you'll know that you're, you're persuaded is when, you're, when, you're, when you have less arguing on your inner thought, right? The thought inside is matching the action outside, right? And so I'm not struggling so much between uh, what I feel is right or what I think is right, but what I know is right, right? That I, that I experience from the Word of God. When the Word of God comes into me, into my heart, into my mind, and begins to come out, right, to that, that outside. So the inner argument is, is showing the exact same reflection out, outside to the world around us, right? There's, there's a reflection. <laughs> Isn't that really true? 
Love is just simply a reflection of what we already have inside of us. That's what, that's what being a Christian is all about, right? God wants our intimacy, not our acquaintance. Come on, think about that. Uh, if, if we don't change, uh, if we don't change the voice that we listen to, if we don't, if we don't take attention to the voice of truth inside of us, the Word of God in us, then we will continue down the same road we are already on. Amen? I, I, like, I like this verse. One of my favorite verses in all the Bible is Colossians 3, uh, verse 1, but I'm not going to say that one. Verse 2 says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. So our affection, our love should be set on the one that is above all things. Amen? His name is Jesus. Our, our affection. God is love. <laughs> And God is good. You can say that with me tonight. But we, we must set a higher priority. Come on. On, on our eternal worship. Our, our eternal relationship with God. Than on the temporal ones that are here below. Come, that's, that's a real good, a real good statement. So I, I love the word accompany salvation. Okay. Because... Uh, often in life, and I, I don't know if you've been through any circumstances, but there's a, there's a lot of times that we feel alone, right? We feel like there's nobody that understands what I've gone through. Nobody understands the sacrifices that I made. Nobody understands how I feel right now. Nobody understands what I'm thinking. Nobody understands the, 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 the hell I've been through, you know? Nobody understands any of those things. But I'm going to tell you, you are not alone, right? You are not alone. Jesus is with you right? He's, he's close to you. He's right here with you. Amen? We are not alone. God is with us. I, I love the thought, though, the company salvation. There, there, when, when I get saved, I don't walk alone anymore. I'm, I'm not walking. I'm all by myself. I, I, I've got God in me. I've got Christ walking with me. He's, he's my shepherd, right? The, uh, Psalms 23 says it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words, he's right there with me. He's going to give me what I need. Amen? Amen. So let me, let me give you the, the, the last word, follow. Follow. Are, are you ready to follow? Uh, <laughs> or are you try, still trying to lead the leader? Think, think about this. Are you ready to follow? Or are you still trying to lead the leader? Because, because he is my leader. John 10, verse 27, one of my very favorite verses in all of the Bible. I'll give you a couple of my gems tonight. But my, my, it says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. And then we follow him. I, I, I love the fact that, that my sheep hear. I, I want to give you a, a go a little deeper with that. okay? Because we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We, we speak that out a lot. We know that verse. Uh, but, but my sheep hear. So I think when we, when we get saved, we go to church and we get into these routines where we're hearing the word of God. We, we are hearing, right? And, it, and, and also notice that in, verse, in, that, in that verse, John 10, verse 27, knowing God is not our responsibility. It's his responsibility to know us. Matter of fact, he already knows us. He knows the thought and intent of my heart. He knows my my downsetting, my uprising. He knows my, my yesterday. He knows my tomorrow. And he knows my thoughts right now. He knows me. He knows exactly who I am right now. I don't have to hide from him. I don't have to run from him. I don't have to get scared. He, he knows all of the things that I, 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 that I am. He knows everything about me. And, and, he, and he said, see, but that's the problem. I think we, as we get saved, we hear the voice of God. God knows us. But we lack the last part, the following part, because we still want to lead the leader, right? We still want to tell God what to do, when to do, how to do. How come I don't feel good? Why does this got to be like this? Why come that's that way? Why, why is this like that? Why, I don't understand. La, 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 la. We got all these excuses going on. And, and we struggle with the little word called deny because we're not willing to deny ourselves this, this thing or that thing or this relationship or that thing or this or that or that. And we think that God should just give us everything we want because he's good, right? He is good. But we must do our part. Follow. We must follow, right? Following is my responsibility tonight. Following is your responsibility. Amen? We, we got to go with him. He's trying to accompany us 
into salvation, right into this great, great adventure that he has for us. He wants to, he wants us to go with him, but we got to follow. We got to follow the word of God, not what I think is right, because what I think is right might be wrong. It's the word of God that I must follow. I must follow his voice. I must hear it. I must work at it. As far as getting into the word of God and getting into my relationship with him, allowing him to change me. Amen. If you're willing to follow tonight, you must come to a place where you will deny. Amen? Amen. I, I just want to pray with us uh, for a moment. Father, Lord, I just pray, Lord, everyone under the sound of my voice, God, that they would have the courage, Lord, have the guts to say, Lord, come and be Lord of my life. Truly come and be Lord. Help me tonight to follow you. Help me tonight to deny myself and to take up my cross and begin to walk towards you. And Lord, I just pray that in Jesus' name. And I pray that, that you would just help every one of us to, to have a desire to, to have intimacy with you tonight. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name for what you're doing right now all over the place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> all of us walk around with a thought that governs our very being. We are becoming exactly who we think we are. It's happening right now. I have found it true in my own life. <laughs> Sorry for how that looks. Uh, you know, I, 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 I even get to this place where I, I, I struggle with the lack, okay? And, and uh, I, I think this thought goes in my mind, I don't have enough. But, but the truth is, I have everything I need. Amen? I have Jesus. I'm not alone. Right? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't need to worry about it anymore. I, I'm speaking to somebody tonight who worries too much. Okay? He says, he says cast your care upon him for he cares for you. See, what if you could take all of your cares, all of your worry, and you could set it at the feet of somebody who already knew it all anyways and already has a plan for you? What if you could set it at the feet of someone who loved you more than you love yourself? Tonight is the night that we can set it all down. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Jesus is enough. He is enough right now. He was enough yesterday. He'll be enough tomorrow. Right? I don't need to worry. Wherever I go, my enough is with me. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Uh, please leave a comment below. Please uh, uh, you know, check out all of our uh, all of our stuff online, uh, subscribe, like us. Um, uh, we, we look forward to, to really connecting with you. We look forward to God using this broadcast or any other broadcast or even come see us on a Sunday morning. That would be awesome. We look forward to seeing God do great things. Amen? Amazing things. Have a great night. Be blessed. We love you. Have a good night.